Hi everyone, Tajahao, Annyeong. I'm Kaya Izumi. Today, I'd like to introduce the differences between Chinese Hanfu and Japanese Wafku. I hope you enjoy. Many foreigners get confused with Japanese and then Chinese things, but I don't blame them because we Japanese learned a lot from ancient China. So that's why we have many things in common. We wear same kind of costumes that left side covers the right color. We both use chopsticks and Chinese characters. This time, I would like to introduce you how Japanese people used to dress like Chinese people in ancient times and how that style changed into current Japanese kimono. By watching this video, I'm sure you can find some features that are unique to kimonos. In the Yayoi era, it seems like the technique to make silk was introduced to Japan from China. We brought craftsmen who made fine silk textiles from a kingdom called Go in China. So even today, the stores uh, sell silk textiles and kimono are called Gofukuya. In ancient times, uh, we Japanese learned, imitated, and then also brought many things as much as possible from the Tang Dynasty in China. As you can see, they look like Hanfu in China rather than current kimonos. They also had hairstyles that were similar to people in the Tang Dynasty. But in the Heian era, sending delegates to Tan in China was abolished for many reasons. As a consequence, things gradually changed into Japanese ways over the centuries. We call it Kokufu Bunka. Many historical dramas you can see in Japan feature the Edo era. It's kinda unfortunate because I want to know more things in the Asuka and the Nara eras when we had more connections with China and the Korean Peninsula. Now let's get started. This time I'm gonna be wearing this pink hurisode. Hurisode means the kimono that has dangling long sleeves. This is obijime, which I put around my waist wrapping, obi. And this is obiyage, which I put underneath my chest. This is obi, which means waist wrapping. And it's got some gold and silver strings woven into it. And also got some cherry blossoms on it. Of course, this kimono and the obi are made of silk, and this kimono also got some cherry blossoms on it. For pictures of kimonos and obis, real gold powder or gold seeds are used. But casual kimonos don't have such pictures and embroideries on them. Now, first, I'm going to be introducing the first uh, distinctive um, things that probably can see in Hanfu. And this is how Japanese people used to dress in the Nara era. Now, this is something probably you can't see in wearing Chinese Hanfu or Western dresses, but we make straight waist lines with these pads and then towels so that when we wear obi waist wrappings, it won't be bent. This is probably something unique to Japanese kimonos, but cloth is cut in straight lines and has square or rectangular shapes. And I think this is the second biggest uniqueness in Japanese kimonos. Uh, we put plastic seat into the color so that it won't get wrinkled and stands when we put it on.
However, this part is something that we have in common in China, Korea, and Japan. We always put the left side of the color over the right. In Japan, probably in China too, if we do it in the opposite way, it's for dead people at funerals. There are so many theories why we wear the left side over the right, but as for Japanese people, it seems like we wear it in that way because people in the Tang Dynasty China used to dress like that. For other theories, please take a look at the description box. When normal Japanese women wear kimonos, we open the back of the neck but、uh, with a fist can fit in. Michael and Angeisha open the back of their necks、uh, more widely to show the skin、uh, more, but this is something to add some sexiness. So if normal citizens overdo it, that'll look odd. And unlike yukatas, we have to wear this first layer when we wear kimonos. To color kimonos, each craftsman dyes、uh, his own part. Before putting a kimono on, we fold the color in two. Traditionally, this kind of risode is for younger women. When women get married or older, they are supposed to cut the dangling sleeves shorter to be less appearing. But since I'm a performer, I don't care such a thing. When I put a kimono on, I fold the kimono in the way that will make me easier to go to the bathroom. And I tie around my waist with a lover string. This is something unique to the、uh, later Edo style and、uh, current kimonos, but we make another layer around the waist. I have to be careful not to leave any wrinkles. And make sure the seam of the kimono comes in the middle. This is something we don't necessarily have to do, but if you want to look more gorgeous, then you can add another color around your neck. I can put a kimono on by myself, but this time I asked my mother to do it for me because she's an expert and. And、uh, I thought I will look better if she helps me. And this time, the design I wanted to have、uh, for my obi was kind of complicated, so I needed her help. She didn't want to show her face in the video, so she's wearing a mask. How long it takes to put on a kimono depends on the design of the obi. If the obi design is complicated, it will take more time. And if you have other layers to put on, it will take longer. But to wear a yukata, it will probably take only 15 minutes or so. And if you put on a casual kimono, it will probably take about、um, 20 to 25 or 30 minutes.
to put on a kimono, you need some strings and bands to hold the kimono. Now you can see how long an obi is. In earlier times, we Japanese used to dress like Tan people in China. However, as the time went on, our waist lapping obi developed into thicker and then longer ones. We wear a waistband that has a plastic or a thick paper seat in it so that when we wear an obi, it won't be bent. I think the reasons why many Japanese people don't want to wear kimonos anymore are because this part is too much work, it takes a while, and obis are normally expensive. You can make the ovi into different kinds of designs. An ovi can be made into shapes like a butterfly or a rose. So finally, the third biggest uh, difference, or I should say uh, development, is tabi. And tabi are kind of like socks, and then these are sandals, uh, dori sandals. We used to wear shoes like Chinese people did in ancient times. But gradually, we quit wearing them. A lot of times, Japanese people like to follow rules, and there is also a rule how to fold a kimono. If you do it randomly, you get scolded. This is called Saganishiki, which is made in the prefecture I live in. What is so unique about it is that it's made of real gold strings and Japanese paper. So if you soak it in a bucket of water for a couple of days, the paper part will be melted and the gold remains. <laughs> 